name is Richard Samuel. I'm playing Thomas Eichhorst. David, at this stage of your career, how does it feel to be playing an action hero? Well, <laughs> let's hear it for the oldies, eh? <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, that's uh, a good, good question. And it's, uh, it's just something I never, ever imagined. Because I, my, <laughs> my daughter, when, from when she was very young, about five years old, a long time ago, she said, every time she'd see me on TV, she said, Dad, why are you always dying? <laughs> and I always seemed to be in a hospital bed with pyjamas on and nicotine stains on the front and, and uh, on the point of um, oblivion. And uh, so it's nice, it's very exciting to play someone who's not only proactive, but he's, he's leading the charge. He's, he's, in, he's persuading everyone else to follow in his way. Um, so yes, it's, uh, it's great to be playing someone with, with a real mission. Have you had any training to use your wolf sword? Oh, I had a little bit uh, of, um, of, of sword training. I think um, maybe when they offered me it, knowing that there was a lot of sword players, because I'd spent quite a few years with the Royal Shakespeare Company in England, that I knew how to handle a sword, but they were wrong. Because I, I was very rarely given a weapon, <laughs> so um, so I had a bit of bit of training, and uh, the guys who, who taught me how to do it were terrific. What attracted you to this character? What attracted you to this role? What was significant about it that made you really want to play it? Well, apart from the reasons that I said about him being um, being someone who's who's, who's driven. not just a, a hatred of vampirism, but it, it's a personal mission as well because of what's happened to his friends in the camp years before, and which, you, which you get in the flashbacks as it goes on. And of course his, um, his, his late wife, um, and the fact that you gradually see him revealed as a man as the story goes on. It's not. It's not all explained or laid on the plate for the audience in the first reel. You, um, you may wonder what the half is doing in the jar. You may wonder why he has to get to the airport and tell people at first. But you're not sure. And, and neither is anyone else, because would you trust um, an 80-year-old man with a sword stick <laughs> turning up in an airport so you could destroy all these bodies? You've got to burn them. It was like you would assume he was a little eccentric, to say the least. So the fact that he has his secrets and he's, he's, he's kept his, in, his, uh, in his heart, if not in his basement, for so many years, just waiting for this day. Um, and the fact that he's, he's dropped out of life after everything happened, after he failed the previous time to destroy the master. And obviously he's, he's, he's just kept his head below the parapet, lived, lived quietly, um, anonymously. Um, anybody seeing him on the street would have no idea what was in his heart or what, was, what he was planning. And I love you know, the, the idea of playing someone with a, a big secret like that. Very what was the first um, film by Guillermo that you both saw that, that something about that attracted you to what with uh, this project? That, that stunned me the most was, was uh, Pan's Labyrinth. But then, uh, 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 crazy enough, I worked for him because I dubbed the French version of Hellboy 2. Uh, just two years before uh, he contacted me for, for, for this one. So this was the perfect start to, 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 to talk to him on Skype, you know. And so, But basically, for me, he, he's a creator of worlds. He's a very visual guy. And it's not only the visual, but they have content. It means, for me, what was so amazing that all those creatures are not just creatures to, 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 to frighten you. They, creature, they are creatures that, that have their own purpose of life, their own way of, 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 of pursuing uh, They strive for something. They, they have their, their, their sense of life inside themselves. So Guillermo basically treats all those creatures like, like his kids or babies, and he wants them to grow up, and he, he 
wants us to discover the, 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 the purpose of life and thus in, in a certain weird way like identify with them you know at least understand their existence it's not just a, a, an image of bad you know? so that was for me the trigger really that thrilled me to, to, to start working with them.